Hi, I'm Rick Christensen. Uh, this is the final part of our three-part series in effective resume writing and presenting yourself to those employers. A couple of questions that come up very often when I talk to people that are writing their resume. First one is, is it better to use a functional format or the traditional chronological format? Well, it really depends. If you're wanting to continue your, your career so that that most recent experience is your best qualifier for your future position, then you're probably going to want to use that chronological version. If, on the other hand, you want to change careers or use experience that might be early in your career, you may want to use the, the functional. The value of the functional resume is that you can take those accomplishments from non-related jobs, from jobs that are older, and put them up at the forefront of the resume so that when the employer looks at it, they see you've got the skills for the job you're applying for. And the fact that you may not have held that job recently or you may have never held the job title, they see you've got those transferable skills and accomplishments. So it really depends, and you need to make that determination as to which of those two is probably the best for you. One tip you can always use is that if someone calls you and says, would you send me your resume? Ask them the question. Say, would you prefer to see that as a chronological version or a functional version? Because frankly, if someone gets the version that they tend to like better, it's going to be much easier for them to find what they're looking for. Second question that comes up, where should I put my education on my resume? Well, again, that depends. If you've got recent education, and that's one of your better qualifiers, if you're a recent graduate, then you'd want to put it up front because that's the thing that qualifies you for the job that you're applying for. On the other hand, like many people where the, your education is older and it's not recent, then what's more important for that employer to see is your recent work history. So what I would do in that case is I would put my education at the end. Uh, most resume readers are trained to think of the education at the end, so they will normally skip to the end to see what your degree is. Next question that comes up is, do I really need to tailor every resume I send out? Simple answer, yes. Now, what most people do is they create a resume master. Now, that master may be three, four, five pages long but it has all the accomplishments that they've had. It has all the skills that they've got. So when applying for a specific job, what you do is you read very carefully what their requirements are, what are their needs, what are the problems they have that you can solve, and then you pick out those appropriate bullet points off of that master resume and put it into the resume that you send. And one final note. Once you've been invited for that interview and the interview is concluded, what you really need to do is make sure you send every person you talk to that good, warm, heartfelt thank you. And the thank you should really be three parts. The first part should be a thank you for, the, for their time, their courtesy for interviewing you for the position. The second part should be something that you and that individual talked about. And then the last part is a second thank you and perhaps a strength that will give you the, the upper hand in this position. Hopefully this, this series has been helpful to you. However, if there are still questions, if you still want more information, what I would really encourage you to do is to send us an email at info at careerdevelopmentpartners.com and ask that question. We'll be happy to help you and assist you through the, the process of developing the resume, looking at your job search strategy. So again, thank you for your time. I appreciate your attention. Thank you.